There once was a ship that put to sea, and the name of the ship was the Belly of Tea. The winds blew hard, her bow dip down, oh blow me, bully boys blow. Soon may the wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tugging is done, we'll take our leave and go. She had not been two weeks from shore, when down on her a right whale bore. The captain called all hands and swore he'd take that whale in tow. Soon may the wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tugging is done, we'll take our leave and go. Before the boat had hit the water, the whale's tail came up and caught her. All hands to the side, harpoon and fought her when she dived down low. All right, and welcome everyone to the much anticipated, not too long overdue, session 13 of Skull and Shackles, a Pathfinder edition. Pathfinder first edition actual play run by myself and four really cool dudes that have really turned themselves into a well a force to be reckoned with a force to be reckoned with and that reckoning may well be coming this evening it may well be coming this evening in the form of a large chelish man of war but before we get to that we're going to go around the table have everyone introduce themselves tell us who they are playing and then we're going to have a delightful recap from none other than myself because I would not put that evil on the players. I've decided that's something I'm gonna not do because I can always see the look of fear in their eyes. And uh after fear. mine last week. There's enough fear going around. Yeah, well it was it was a thing. It existed. I'll tell you that much. Uh but let's go Atomic Blau, Zeb and Patrick. Take it away, gentlemen. Hey everybody, I'm Atomic. Hey Mar just uh, lovely, 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 lovely true to be around Harlan Blackmane. And uh, he just loves dealing with people and all of their problems at all points in time. That's going to be fantastic. Love it. Love that. Howdy, everyone. I'm Blau. I'm playing Caius the Kinless, our Asmodee anti-paladin and fearless leader. Literally fearless, because... No, no, never mind. anti paladins don't get that. I'm uh, full of fear. So much fear. Constantly <laughs> afraid of everything. <laughs> yes, always afraid. Steps on the deck. Ah, oh, wood! <laughs> That could be a What's stage. going on, guy? <laughs> Scared little boy. <laughs> um, I'm Zeb. I'm uh, the first mate, uh, loyal to the ship and the crew. I am playing our human fighter, Edward Tarlos. Hello, I'm uh, Patrick. I play walk here twice. Well, now thrice round, almost. And uh, I'm the boss, Wayne. I'm the one that keeps the morale of the crew up. Tell the captain what the crew's thinking. And I'm looking forward to actually pulling my blade once in a while. I haven't had to do it. that in a while. I think that's fake news. I don't believe it. Right. And uh, I'm offended that you would even suggest <laughs> such a thing. Of course, I'm Dare Wolf, the Game Master, a.k.a. the Pirate King. But on our last session, the intrepid crew of the devil's deed devil's deed as it were uh devil's promise devil's deed devil's deed there it is devil's deed had run across a a pirate ship that appeared to be engaged thank you so much for the prime sub appeared to be engaged with a merchant vessel upon approaching it they quickly realized that it was a trap and this was one of the uh one of the uh, the wretches of the sea that likes to prey upon its own kind. It was a pirate crew that specifically preys upon other pirate crews. Long story short, and several amazing crits later from the guy that's not actually a ranger, but plays one on Twitch, uh, they defeated them quite single-handedly, actually. It was actually a really good fight. Uh, Caius almost got murdered, but it was all as planned, um, and he made it look like it was intentional. And uh, they murdered everyone. It was amazing. So they headed back to Goat's Head, where they met... Well, they met a man. A man that quickly has just endeared himself with the crew. Everyone <laughs> loves him. Thinks he's just the bee's knees. Literally, the bee's knees. Elliot is his name. Elliot, of course. What can I say, Captain? It is a complete misunderstanding. He's fine. But he is their new master gunner that uh, can use effectively the large ballistae that they have now installed on the Devil's Promise. But the crew traveled back out into the Fevered Sea, the area south of the Shackles. Several successful raids later, 
some more plunder on their way back to Goat's Head after about a month of raiding the Fevered Sea, as it were, the name of the, tra the chapter, the Raiders of the Fevered Sea. The crew was struck by a storm the likes of which rivaled the massive hurricane that is north, the eye, as it is called, the eye, north of the Shackles. Despite their best efforts, they were forced into a small natural cove on some unnamed island uh, near the Fevered Sea and south of the Shackles. That storm, though it has weakened, is still raging. The crew dropped anchor, lashed down everything, and has been simply waiting it out. We're actually going to open our first scene aboard the Devil, as it were, the Devil's Promise. And that first scene, the Devil's Deed, excuse me, Devil's Deed, and that first scene is actually going to take place inside, inside of one of the lower storage decks, sort of in the back. There are several crates, as I had mentioned. The ship itself is laden with plunder at this point. You have some silks, you have some gold, spices, food, perhaps even a couple of slaves that you have taken during some of your successful raids of the Fevered Sea. But putting their clothes back on, we see one Edward Tobias and one Griffer Tibbs. One Griffer Tibbs. They have just had a, a go about it, as it were, and they are now in the process of putting themselves back together. Griffer, who is the first to be dressed, seems very practiced, is eyeing Edward here, and Edward, out of the corner of your eye, you see her looking at you, and you can't quite tell with that one eye, with the little tattoo, little snake tattoo beneath it, what she's thinking. And this is something that you've run into several times with her, Edward. At one moment, she's throwing herself at you, and in the next moment, she's giving you this side eye, like she thinks you're the most wretched, wretched piece of shit she's ever seen in her entire wretched existence as a pirate. Right now, you're getting that stink eye from her in this moment. You are in the process of pulling your drawers up, like your pants, all right? Your slacks yep. up. Yeah. No she bridges. speaks. Do you ever... Are you satisfied with your lot in life, Edward? First mate to a... Asmodian? Or do you think you will be your own captain one day? See myself being captain, aye? Right? Like to be captain. Like to have my own vessel. Go out and plunder the seas. No? It's not what's needed of me. Is it about what's needed? Or what is desired? Griff, I'm a very loyal man. That's Loyalty all I've got left He has nothing to world. do with taking what is yours. She pushes herself forward. You've just about lashed your, your pants, but she like kind of like grabs you, not aggressively, but more of like a, like kind of like wraps her arms around you and pulls you tight. Your pants fall back down. There's like a bloop. Out of noise, she pulls you in right. tight in this hug, right? Will you always put the needs of others above your own? Being a pirate is about taking what you want, giving nothing back. I don't... I don't want to always serve under a devil worshipper. I want to serve under you. And at the mention of under you, he like pulls you just a little bit closer. All right. Well, darling. Keeps up like this. Captain's got plans. I've got plans. But do those plans include you sailing under his flag? Or your own, Edward. I'm loyal to Caius, but I'm also loyal to you. 
I'm loyal to those that are loyal to me. But I am my own man. We'll work with Kais, but I would like to fly my own ship under my own banner. But he saved me. I've saved him. The crew has saved us. We've saved the crew. We're all in this together, Glass. That... Yes, I will, I will have my own ship one day. That, uh, that sm side eye uh, has turned into like a genuine smile. And she, you know, kind of wraps her 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 hands like around the back of your neck like pulls you in for like a deep kiss and uh, mm -hmm. with that we're gonna cut away over to outside of that room where sandra quinn is uh next to owlbear uh is next to owlbear uh mahim and uh, shivka are kind of cross the way watching and uh walking down the stairs uh, perhaps you're coming to get some supplies walk here or, I mean, who knows? Who knows what you're coming to get? But for some reason, you're heading downstairs. And uh, you actually hear Sandra. She is apparently trying to teach Albert how to read. And she says, no, 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 no. This, this, it's the, the sound. T, 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 h, t. And what you hear is, buh, buh, buh. And, uh, and it's back and forth. And she's starting to look a little frustrated, but she's not given up. And Owlbear picks up the, like, book, spins it around, kind of looks at it, shakes it, and, like, starts to laugh as he shakes it. And she just kind of face palms here, looks over, sees Wakir, and says, Am I barking up the wrong tree, climbing the wrong mast here? Possibly. I don't think this one is going to gain anything from what you're trying to do. We all have our we all have our roles to play, and his is to smash and kill things. Yes, but I... perhaps you're right book here. I just thought... And um, Albert is now tearing pages out of the book uh, and just throwing them like they're confetti and he's just laughing and Shivka and Mahim are currently like eating a little, like some apples or something or some oranges. Oranges. You know, gotta keep scurvy away. They're like peeling some oranges just laughing at him. It's not even like it's not even mean or like it doesn't feel like it's like, like they're making fun of him. They're just... He's having fun and they're having fun with him in this moment. Yeah. But uh but Sandra was, No, let's go ahead. I would I would not waste waste my efforts on this point with him. I would find someone else in the crew, younger, that can be molded. I'm assuming you can read. Hold on, let me check my intelligence. <clears throat> oh, yes, I can. <laughs> she smiles. I was going to bring this to the captain's attention, and I wanted to run it by you first, as you do have the captain's ear. I was thinking that we could perhaps educate the crew. An intelligent crew is a stronger crew, at least I think. Um, you'll have a hard time doing that with pirates. You'll have to make it voluntary. I wouldn't There's no try way to force them force to do them. anything. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a voluntary. S set it up, of sure, of course, set it up. But um, hopes lower. You might do better by teaching one that can than ten that won't. She nods. That's all I can help you with, dear. Out there. Oh. What do you think of your club? <laughs> would you like something fancier? 
He drops the club and makes the gimme gimme motion with his hands. Okay. I don't ha I don't have it on me. He picks up but... his club and eyes you narrow eyed. When the time comes, um, we might get you a new shiny loot. A shiny thing that can cut. Shiny. Shiny. Blade. Big like the like the captains. Oh, Captain! Uh, oh, captain! 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 And he starts jumping up and down really excitedly uh, about I just that. Put my hand, hand, hand on his head. Hand on his head. Good, 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 good Albert. Um, go lift. Go, go do your job. He starts lifting boxes aimlessly, um, but he's having a good time. He, they just keep him entertained. Sandra <sighs> chuckles as Albert wanders off, and then she has this concerned look on her face, and she. You, of course, are two a worshipper of Besmara. This storm, it, it has been going longer than any storm that I can remember in recent history. Perhaps my entire history at sea. You think the lady is angry with us? Um, probably more goes, or probably need to have a tap with Harlan. And why would Gosra really be mad with us? Gozra's not mad at anyone. She's just Gozra. <laughs> she, she's she's equally disdainful of everything. Gozra is like nature, unbiased. unbiased. Simply is. Sometimes it's good for the person. Sometimes it's bad. She could care less. <laughs> he, I don't know if Gozra's a he or a she. Both. Yes. But, Yes. Exactly. Yes. yes. They, yes. Uh, excuse me, they. Uh, for our, our pronoun proof, yep. they are uh, indifferent to us. Hmm. So. Even still, I'm going to say a prayer to the pirate lady that Always. we have chosen They're to worship. Daily. In fact, more than daily. Should be. Perhaps thrice something... daily, dare I say, oh. thrice drowned? Um, I haven't officially taken that title yet, but um, <laughs> um, yeah, is um, I would not, I would not to be too too concerned. Um, I'll I'll bring it up with Harlan, and see what he says. Do so, and as always, walk here. I appreciate your time. Um, Andrew nods, and we'll head off upstairs. Bahim and Shivka uh, are like eating some eating their oranges and uh shivka like gives a like kidney punch to mahim mahim turns around and uh and looks at her and they start like wrestling like aggressively like just like having a good time and uh we're gonna pivot now up where would harlan like to be hmm so we're still you are currently still pinned at this time. You are pinned in this harbor, and the rain is starting to subside. But if you're open to a potential suggestion, I think it would be kind of neat if you were up in one of the crow's nests and a helping keep watch. Yes, it's a little soggy. Yes, it's a little rainy. But Arietta Banson uh, is in the crow's nest, and perhaps the two of you are not necessarily sharing it, but you're both up there so that you have two sets of eyes rather than one. How does that sound? Yeah, sounds great. I love that. So you two have been up there. It's been raining for a while. It's still raining. And it's raining. And it's died down slightly. But there is still a... This, like, ever so often there's, like, a roll of thunder. And it's pretty hard to see. You can just barely make out the entrance of the... um of the cove this kind of natural cove you find yourselves in and as you are up there it's been you guys have been quiet for the last like 30 minutes maybe you said your hellos little pleasantries nothing too crazy and arietta finally uh, breaks the silence um and she says alden i have to ask and forgive me if this is a bit where the fuck did you find that bird well, well, well. Like, look, it was here, it wasn't here one moment, and then a moment later, it was here, as though it just appeared out of thin air. No one has said anything about it. It simply wasn't, and then it was. It's fucking weird. That's all I'm saying. 
Squawk. Well, 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 well. Being a follower of Gozer, I'm used to things just ebbing and flowing, going with the tide, you see. Uh, while I haven't had the opportunity to become the thrice drowned, like dear Wakia there, I was marooned on an island once with, uh, mm, well, the former owner, and he tips the hat, of this hat. And, um, well, the bird tried to kill me. You, and... You didn't... You didn't fuck a fish like Contraband, did you? Oh, gods, no. I have standards. <laughs> he just, like, like, just audibly, like, just shivers, and, like, it goes all the way from, like, his head, all the, like, all the way to the tip of the tail. Just, just all the way down. I'd like no, to no, imagine no, like that. that both of you do it simultaneously. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, like, just, just both is like, no, 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 no. But, while searching below some cliffs, there's this, well, for all intents and purposes, giant egg. And I thought, maybe due to the dehydration that I had seen, I was seeing things. Mm. And, uh, getting a little too close for comfort, uh, well, it burst out and tried to eat my face. It's still a baby, actually. It's... It she bigger. looks over at the man-sized bird resting on the edge of the crow's nest, leans back from it, I would like to imagine that it leans forward slightly, like, hello, kind of thing. <laughs> hello there. Like, Did you say a baby? Yes, it came out of the egg this size. How big is it going to get? Fuck if I know. Huh. He killed a guy. I heard. In graphic detail. Actually, he seriously starts counting on his fingers. Actually, he's killed quite a few people at this point. Uh, I'd like to imagine in this moment that that uh, Blackbeak leans a little bit too uncomfortably close to Arietta. Um, and she's just, like, looking at him, and he's, like, way in her space. And she's almost, like, leaning over. And the bird's just, like, like boops her on the nose real quick. And she goes, ah! <laughs> like, shit. She's a little nervous about it. And uh, as that happens, give me a perception check. Perception check. Harlan, because I want to see if you notice something. Let's indeed see if and I notice Arietta something. Arietta is going to assist, and the bird may assist as well. The bird may assist if it would stop closing the other fucking character sheet. Apparently Arietta should have just made the perception check. Yeah, well if hers is already good enough, then let's, That's okay. let's, see. let's have the bird do it. Yeah. Rule 20 doesn't like me having multiple characters. Oh, no one's there. All right. So, as the bird is uncomfortably leaning close to Arietta, she very gingerly puts her hand on its, its beak and just kind of pushes it back, squints her eyes, and she's looking north towards the entrance of the cove. And the rain has, about this time, started to settle out. And while it's still obscuring your vision slightly, you can just barely make out three massive masts sticking up over the tree line. Looks to be about maybe 1,500 or so feet. It's not a very deep cove that you find yourselves in. But you see three massive masts. Harrietta whispers to you are you seeing what i'm seeing so after she points it out he'll as ranking officer of the crow's nest have the spyglass uh and take a proper look at it we're going to wish that uh gozra was actually pissed off with us i think you see you see a massive massive ship you can't quite see the whole thing but based on your check, you can tell that this thing's probably about triple the size of your vessel. Probably has about four to five times the number of men. And what's disconcerting is at the back of the ship, you see a black and red flag. It's the Chelish Navy's flag. Mm. This looks He's like a man of war. Yeah. He's immediately going to look over the crow and says, Someone get me the captain! At the mention of, get me the captain, there is a quick 
and loud, rapid tap 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 on the captain's quarters. Uh, your little devil companion, uh, Nisara, Nisara, yes, uh, Nisara. jumps up, pulls out two tiny little daggers, and does one of these, and calms down, puts them away, narrows her eyes, and then disappears. He nods towards where Nisara was and stands to go answer the door, having heard presumably shouts outside. Yep, you hear some shouts from outside. And as you return to the deck, there's a little bit of rain, but it's really calmed down. It's just like a light drizzle at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, the rolling thunder has, uh, has pretty much dissipated. There's no more thunder, just a little bit of light rain and the waves lapping. But you look up and you can just make out Arietta still uncomfortably standing next to the giant bird and and Harlan shouting over the side for the captain and um let's see if we're just seeing it over the top this is, so it's probably not visible to him no. um but Harlan will give her the spyglass and then quickly make his way down uh to on the captain rather than just yelling like an idiot Hey, what's your name? <laughs> Caius. <laughs> Fuck you, Caius. <laughs> Wait, what's your name? Harlan. Fuck you, Harlan. <laughs> yeah. I love it. All right, continue. But he'll he'll indicate, you know, um, this is the, the rough heading we were on the map. Those are about right. So if I say like, you know, 11 o'clock off the, you know, the port bow. Yeah. So I can actually the... maneuver you guys back over to yeah. that map so you guys can see... <laughs> what's going on so again you see you guys are just tucked in this little like natural cove and apparently the ship is like just holding ground right at the only two entrances that exist into here chillish man of war captain 11 o'clock off the port bow outside of the cove easily gotta be i don't know 44 guns oh i guess we're cannons would be yeah. so yeah. ballista Ballista, yeah, whatever. Yeah, Ky but Caius kind of draws his mouth into a line and says, well, once the ship sprouts legs, we're not getting out past it. Well, we can't take on something of that displacement. They'll have five times the number, if that, if not more. Outrange us by a thousand yards more. Once our gunner can work miracles, no. I should have bought those potions. He you know, says under his breath. At the mention, we need either a way to... Go ahead, please. Go ahead. We need either a way to slip past it or deceive it. Well, the weather's dying down, so our chances for slipping past it are going to be... They're not good, let's put it that way. Entering into the conversation is a man who has truly endeared himself with the crew. Oh boy. Um, he is, has a hood up and uh, is kind of covering himself from the rain. He doesn't look none too happy to be wet, wet but uh, he he enters into the conversation. Excuse me, Captain, I could not help but uh, overhear the shouting. Has something happened? There's a man of war at the, in the bay, at the mouth of the bay. Is this a man of war that is a friend or a man of war that is an enemy? I don't know many pirates with Man of War. I can count on one hand how many Man of Wars I am known to be pirates. It is zero. And I don't think many Chalaxians have friends either. Oh, the Chalaxians is that I know have many friends. Uh, Caius has you. He ha Wait, you are not a, a, a Chalaxian. You are a Asmodean? Forgive me. Chalaxian by blood, not by choice. As we all are. So, do we have a plan? I might be able to draw up some church hokum. Intimidate them with a state apparatus. That is uh, a chance that we could take. We could also disable their ship, cut the rudder line, and simply outrun them. Either a commando mission or a disable 
or a uh, deception. Matt, well, it's always suicide, but you know. I, for one, do not wish to choose the suicide. So we better have a damn good plan for going up against a metal wall. I think we should try the deception first. Worst comes to worst, it fails. But the way I intend to launch it, uh, as my plan comes together, we'll, we'll get an official response. I like it. I like it. So the crew, now that the rain is subsiding, starts to busy itself with preparing the ship for departure. Not actually leaving, of course, because they're waiting for orders. The knowledge that the ship is currently locked down by a Chelish man of war quickly, quickly travels to all of the crew. And surprisingly, they're very confident. Um, you hear whispers, Caius, that, you know, if anyone can get us through this, it's Captain Caius. He's seen us this far. He's, he's Chalaxian. He can just talk us out of this. He's a man of words. Like, they're just, they're, like, confident that you've got them through this. So, Caius, what is the battle plan to see, to try and deceptify yourself through this encounter? All right. So, Caius is going to spend some time while the other officers put together the commando mission plan. So he's going to give leave that to Zeb, uh, Harlan, and uh, and walk here. While he goes into his cabin, finds the best piece of parchment available to him, you know, some nice stationery used for official, uh, official communiques, and begins drawing up a, uh, a letter referencing uh, the... the his big library of Asmodean books and everything, basically drawing up a letter saying, I wrote a little like excerpt from it, uh, or a summary, I mean, whatever. It is the will of the Church of Asmodeus, and by extension the state of Cheliax, that the ship known as the Devil's Deed be allowed to continue upon its business as it furthers the goals of Asmodeus. Defiance of this will is to be met with the full weight uh, of the Church's displeasure. And the idea is that Nisara is going to deliver this to make it clear that there is truly an Asmodean link on this ship. And I am going to forge anything necessary to do it using uh, my linguistic skill and my trait that allows me to take a natural 20 in only five times as much time. That results in a 25 on linguistics to see that this is a, you know, any, any of the signatures and such are a forgery. Take it. I like it. I like it. And, Nis and Nisara would be there to obviously receive a return reply saying, okay, all right, or no, fuck you. <laughs> I like it. I like it. How do you seal it? Hey, He's, going to take it. He's going to take his holy symbol and press it into, into a wax seal on the, the, the uh, thing. Brilliant. So it, so it ends up with a, you know, a pentagram, uh, wax seal in red is red wax brilliant brilliant it's a pretty fucking good plan when brilliant. i can lie Ooh. brilliant might have a short session today boys that is brilliant N nisara travels Ooh. off to go and deliver this letter so we cut to a scene back as the rain has all but stopped and we see this tiny little invisible demon from her perspective. It's like a bird's eye view. It's a it's a devil's eye view. There it is. A devil's Ooh. eye view, as it were. And she oh, is what? flying over. <laughs> her little self. She's like... <laughs> gets over to the other ship. Lands on that ship. Now, is she still invisible, or is she making herself known? Make herself known. Makes herself known. And a couple of the Chalaxian marines on there. And as she gets there, um, she can see that they are preparing for a fight. Like, they are they are getting ready to, to throw down, as it were. And um, she uh, she waits, and a couple of the guys are like, All right, yeah, we'll, we'll go get the captain. No problem, no captain. And a man who has a, a pretty nice hat. It's not, it's not a blue hat, like a certain... Harlan has. 
but it's a pretty nice hat. And this man is Commander Kyan Kane. And uh, what you would know, what you would know about this is he is the captain of a very well-known pirate hunting Chilexian vessel known as the Dominator. This is literally the pirate killer. This is who this is. This this ship's only job is to go out, hunt pirates, sink them, no mercy. However, however, done a really good job on that linguistics check. Really good job. Nerissa, Nisara, Nerissa, Nisara, 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 Nisara. All right, so Nisara. She hands the letter to him. She's just kind of you know fluttering there with her wings. He eyes her very suspiciously. He opens up the letter, begins to read it. I ask you, devil, what is your captain's... What is your captain's purpose in these waters? What... What deed? Referencing the name devil's deed does he what deed does he seek to accomplish for the church of asmodeus sorry looks back and forth and essentially you presume me to speak for the church and my captain i'm but a messenger he nods he smiles. Does 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 she have sense motive? Does have her do a sense motive on this guy? Wow. Oh. Uh he smiles. Would you like you then, messenger, to take a message to your captain? You would wait for a few moments while I draft this letter. He turns. He goes back to his quarters. A bunch of chelish guys just kind of like flanking her. And she's just like, hi. <laughs> Waving at him. Being a demon devil. Five minutes go by. A couple minutes. He returns. Similar letter. Wrapped. Sealed with the Chalaxian navies. Like press. And hands it to her. She'll accept it. Pop into invisibility and fly off. He watches as she goes, and smiles, and just waits. Flies back. She'll, she'll actually do a loop around yeah. the ship after having flown and gone invisible. See if anyone is, is watching her. Uh, no one appears to be watching her at this time. Or okay. she can tell. Just, just, just doing the litmus test. Love that journey. She returns with a letter from one commander. Kyan Kane. Crack the seal. Start reading. Greetings. Greetings, humble servant of our Lord Asmodeus. My name is Commander Kyan Kane, commanding officer of the Dominator, the Scourge. The pirate infestation of the shackles. I am to understand, based on your communique, that you are a servant of our lord. I wonder, what deeds does our lord wish of you in these accursed water? I look forward to your expedient and thorough response. Big, <laughs> aggressive, John Hancockian signature. And like eight Except different titles under it. Um, where is... I'm, sorry, I'm trying to find something. No, so I'm looking at the wrong sheet. That would explain why I couldn't find it. Hmm. Does anyone have a hero point to donate here? Uh, 
Okay. Right, I have zero. zero. All right. So Caius is going to draft a response essentially saying, the church is not beholden to the Chelish state, yet the opposite is not true. The church has no bearing, or, the, or you have no right to ask the church's business. No right to question the will of hell itself. And he's going to basically quote several several passages of scripture and quote the uh, the founding document of the Chelish state with the uh, the contract to uh, to hell. Ooh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And using the plus eight preemptively. That is beautiful. Is that including the plus eight? That's including the plus eight. Okay, so 27. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. So oh, she God. takes it. She flies back. He takes it. He opens it up. Reads it. Skims over the passages of, tele of, of, of Asmodean scripture. Scripture. Sure, sure. mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Looks at it. Looks over, and there is a woman that is standing next to him that uh, she looks to be... She looks to also be, like, probably someone important on the ship. Who she is, um, you're not sure. But she, you know, kind of nods to him, and uh, and he kind of nods back to her. And have your 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 companion there give us a, a perception check, if you would. Okay, she notices a large symbol, a whole an unholy symbol of Asmodeus on this woman's chest, and mm -hmm. um, they're kind of whispering to each other. What languages does your companion speak? Sara speaks common and infernal. Okay. 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 So she understands they are in speaking they are speaking in infernal. It almost seems like they're not trying to hide it. And the woman he like shows it to her and she looks at it. To be fair, the communication would be in infernal as well. Brilliant. She looks at it. She says to him. I know of no such fleets, captains, or crews ordained by our infernal church in these waters. You are the only commander that has been blessed, honored by our lord Asmodeus. I think they are frauds. He narrows his eyes at her. If they are indeed frauds, they are very good ones. Is it worth the risk at angering our lord? Arrows her eyes back at him. I am simply an advisor, Captain. The choice is yours. And I'm gonna have him roll. That's a 27. He does have... Seer probably would be linguistics on this, maybe? Or I was gonna say maybe sense motive. But sense motive is usually when, like, they are... You know what I'm going to have him do? I'm going to have him roll a knowledge religion. Because he does have it. Okay. He's going to roll a knowledge religion. He's got to roll state pretty well. In inner sea gods that... Oh, can I get a bonus for my library, by the way? I bought I bought a massive expensive library of books. Sure. Of the Asmodean faith. Of course. Whatever, whatever that works plus out two. to. I think, like I, two, I think skill books are plus two. The master yeah, plus books. Two, yeah. Right, right. Okay. So um, but it does state in inner sea gods that debates between Asmodeans often result in a battle of what, who can quote the most obscure scripture. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love that. I love that. Oh, I didn't know that. And I love that. So what he's going to do is he's going to make a knowledge religion check. Okay. And his knowledge religion check is going to be trying to counter your check, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's what he's going to try to do. You've set the bar high, right? He's got a pretty good knowledge religion check, actually, all things considered. But he's still got to roll pretty fucking well for this to work. He would rolled really oh. fucking well for that to work. He, I, what a man. He had like a... He, that, oof. So He's got better than I do with my fucking plus eight. Holy shit. Are we just going to be in this cove for six days? No, 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 no. So he responds scripture. to your scripture 
with another more obscure version of scripture that basically states that any that are so-called lawful would have the proper documentation. You are simply writing letters. They would like to see your writ of passage and ordained specific, like the specifics, like letters and contract stating that you are allowed to be in these waters performing deeds on behalf of the church. And it's like, you know how yours was like a page or two? His is three pages. He one-ups you. Takes him like 30 minutes to respond. You guys are all just sitting there super tense. And then he responds. And then she comes back. Um, and she's got it. And it's like a big scroll. Like, it's a big, it's like a scroll. She has to like hand it to you. And there's like three wax seals on it. He just tried to big dick you. Kaius is going to send back a letter that says, I cannot, be, I cannot carry the, uh, the documentation upon me. For I am working with those who do not, you know, I, I am working with those that are not of the faith to further its goals. Ooh. You can find them at, insert Chelish postal box in fucking, uh, in Sargova. Or whatever that. the Chelish Undercover. capital city is, I can't remember. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, he's gonna, he's gonna be like, I'm sorry, the, tr trust me, darling, checks in the mail. That's the, that's the guy's thing. So you want to bluff this? How do you want to do this? Sure, I can do a bluff. Do a bluff check. <laughs> this is not the droids you see. <laughs> These aren't the pirates you're looking for. That's awful. That oh my is not God. great. So you respond. You write the letter. And, um, like, ten minutes goes by. Fifteen. Oh, it, one second. I'm pretty sure there's... One second. Let me look up bluff. Because I, I know that there's things for telling a believable lie. So ten goes by. Pardon? Fifteen. No. 20, 30, 40. There's like an hour that goes by and you still don't have a response. I haven't heard any does shouting. Nisara, does Nassar count as possessing convincing proof? Having having a Chelish messenger? Roll me a D100. We're going to let the dice All decide. Right. High or low? Low. She does. Yes. All right, so that's a plus 10 for having convincing proof. Okay. Uh, and the target wants to believe he's a plus 5. That's up to you. Okay. Whether or not he wants to believe the fact that, you know, okay. he's being conveyed messages by an imp and the person is quoting Shell Scripture at him. Okay. All right. One more save. One more check. All right. It's a DC 24. He responds back to you. After an hour, after an hour, he responds back. It's significantly smaller, significantly smaller scroll than it was last time. And uh, on it, on it is also um, a little bit of like red writing that almost seems to be written in blood, uh, which is kind of interesting. And, uh, do you open it? Yeah. May the Dark we'll Prince... <laughs> may the Dark Prince guide you safely in your journeys. Arlen, from the Crow's Nest, you watch as the Chelish Man of War begins to set sails, and about ten minutes later, begins to depart away from this cove. You has, have successfully lawyered them into leaving you the fuck alone. Yeah, Kai kind of sits down on the, on the stairs up to the, the forecastle and rubs his temple, says, Asmodeus rewards strength and guile. The Chellish state is merely is merely an extension of that policy. <clears throat> Ooh-wee! Um, after the ship's well out of, like, range, um... The crew, three cheers for Captain Gaius! Hip hip! Hurray! Hip hip! Hurray! Oh. Hip hip! Well, that's Woo. all happening. Edward is just gonna fully walk over with a bottle of rum in one hand, put a hand on Gaius' shoulder, and go, Remember when we were scared that they were gonna throw you off the ship first whenever we got captured? Remember when that was a fear that we had? Well, they yeah, had. Gaius nods and says, I'm going to need to get some better documents forged. In fact, <laughs> I'm going to need to get better documents forged, and I need to tell, and I, we need to get to Port Peril quickly. 
We'll say this, Captain. I think we have to ever worry about doubt ever again from these bastards. That's pretty fucked. Mm-hmm. Bass wiggles his head. How long is the journey to, uh... To, to Cheliax? Oh, to Cheliax? Yeah, on ship. Oh, they would be gone for... Because they have to sail north... They have to go all the way around. around. Right? Let me actually move you guys over to the inner sea map really quick. I was going to say, they got to go like all so the way around. They got to okay. go like up around the island and then up to Cheliax to like this port right here. So that's like. I was, I was right, Sarkova. That's like a long time. And that's if they want to go that route. Yeah. They want to skim the Eye of Abandango. Oh, you're also yeah. assuming that they're not just going to. Go look for other prey in the area. No, 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 no. I assume they will, but I want that to. I, I want the postal box to exist mm -hmm. when they get uh, there. Oh, that's smart. That's Ooh, smart. I want. I nice want hour. them to show up. Show up, and I want them to find a fifty-page document that is well forged. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. That's fucking fantastic. That so I need to. So I so good. so we need to spend some money on teleportation services and an excellent uh, forger. Like a ten out of ten forger. That'll. That would keep fucking Chelyax off our fucking ass, too. At least for a while, probably, right? Oh! Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, like, like a 50 or 100 or 200 page document, just a massive fat stack of documents that, that even if the church got it, they'd have to be like, we need to verify that this isn't real. You conniving vampire bitch. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you could basically, you're like, like church sanctioned privateers is what you're yes. going to go for. That's yeah, yeah, but brilliant. so but so but so deeply but like so uh, the idea is that we're so deeply embedded yeah. that to go high enough on the uh the totem pole to verify that we aren't is risking their neck just talking to the people that would have to verify not that that we're not. I love it. I love it. You mentioned that you need a good forger. Cutthroat grok brings to your attention that there is a there is a pirate a free captain that actually lives at a place called Tidewater Rock. She is known to have in her employment a number of really good scribes. Also, conveniently, she is recently single and is looking for a potential new husband. She also mentions to you, Cutthroat Grok, that is, that you don't appear to be betrothed to anyone. And by wedding into a free captain's family is a great way to get yourself some infamy and perhaps even make your way into becoming your own free captain. If that's Little something marriage? you want, Captain. Cass kind of rolls his head and is like, eh, I'll do it for the advantage. But I'm not looking for love. Fair captain, with your stony heart, I don't know if you're capable of love. Kaya smiles. <laughs> at is least my stony heart very... didn't weigh me down to the bottom of the sea this today. Drinks are all made up. Fuck's sake, Captain. You guys are level four right now? Level five. Oh, five. Five. Perfect. All right, you're right where you need to be then. Brilliant. So, do you guys want to go back to Goat's Head first? Or do you want to head straight to Tidewater Rock? There's nothing to be had at Goat's Head right now. Other than selling your shit, getting some extra money. If you oh, want. is it on the way? Where's yeah. Uh, yeah, it's basically straight on the way. Let's yeah. just stop that. Decent dowry of any kind. Yeah. Absolutely. Better than showing up empty-handed. Yeah, that might... I don't show up empty handed. That would look bad. That would look I like so my hands where they're at. What? And we can do some research on the, the person yeah, over there as well. Absolutely. I like that. I like that. I like that. So you guys can head back to Goat's Head. You let the crew relax for a few days, right? Chillax, mm -hmm. throw down, spread your infamy, all that good stuff. And uh, as you are relaxing, there, what kind of research would you guys like to do into this Tidewater Rock? 
I'm looking Ooh. for. I want to know who the first off, who the lady is that is kind of give me a profession running. sailor check, or we could just go with that. Jeez, I was gonna roll, but I'm not going to anymore. Oh, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm not gonna touch nothing. You are you are a madman. Uh, that's impressive. All right, cool. So wow. Um. Holy shit balls! That was better than last night. That was yeah. Last night you couldn't roll over like a five. It was intense. So that's well. Let's get a twenty and just kind of break that curse down. Yeah. Look, all right, cool. So here's what you know. Here is what you know, Lady Agasta Smithy. Lady Agaza Smithy. All right. She is the widow of Iron Bert Smithy. Lady Agasta is of legitimately noble birth, a bite a far-sprung offshoot of a long-exiled Galton family. She was once a rare beauty, but now in her middle years, she has filled out her big-boned frame into a stocky matron. <laughs> That's These are exact words you're getting from people, all right? I just, I'm reading it right Augusta on the book. Smithy? Augusta Smithy, that is correct. Though she still remains a handsome, if rough-edged woman, she maintains a commanding presence and rules Tidewater Rock like a countess on a gelatinous estate, not afraid to give misbehaving servants or unruly guests a rough side of her tongue. All right, that's that's where you're at. Now, she has been unmarried for about been about ten years since her husband died at sea, and um, a couple of suitors have made their way over to her. None have returned. So a couple of free, a couple of wannabe free captains were like, "Hey, how you doing? You want to party?" And she was like, "Sure, we can party." And now their bodies are outside of T Tidewater Rock, hung from the walls. So that's a thing. Um, good times. But uh, yeah, that's okay. Um, what? What else you want to know? Talk to me, Walk here. What, what other information do you need? Um. The best way to approach Tidewater Rock. Any defenses? So it is literally a fortress that was built on, like, there's an ar ar archipelago there, mm -hmm. right? And it was built, like, in the middle of this ar archipelago. It is very easily defended. Um, They also have on this fortress some strange, like, siege-like weapons that shoot balls that explode um it, it's 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 never been breached ever um but as long as you sail there under a white flag you're allowed entrance just not everyone's allowed to leave like if you piss her off you get bedoint as it were okay absolutely harlan i see you there hmm Oh, well, here, ask him if she's got any enemies. Oh, yeah. Does she have any enemies? Lots of enemies, but none that are willing to attack and assault Tidewater Rock. We would inherit those enemies if... You would also inherit Tidewater Rock as a base of operation in the Shackles proper. Uh... Tidewater Rock needs as far as supplies and stuff go. What is it lacking right now? With that 30, Tidewater Rock is attached to a small little island that provides it with fresh water. But they do have several supply ships that go into some of the more mainland areas. Um, in fact, they actually get a lot of their supplies from Goat's Head. Um, a lot of their supplies comes from Goat, Goat's Head because it's one of the it's not a major port, but there's it's a it's a port that like can supply, and they do they have a couple small sailing ships that r do runs between there, but none are arrogant enough to attack those supply ships. They pretty much move unaccosted, um, because as though they do have enemies, they also have a number of allies that would turn, that would come to their aid should they need it. Kind of like a stalemate is the best way I can describe it. No one wants to fuck with them. Because they'll get fucked with, kind of thing. Just a defensive pact sort of thing. Correct. It's like a non-aggression pact. That is correct. 
well, okay, I was going to pick up the supplies if, if they're here, you know, and you'll find parchment and uh, yeah. if there's there someone who can cast a seal for the for the wax beyond his holy symbol, which works, it's just you know, ba basically looking to get the supplies for the for the forgery if uh, if possible while here. You can absolutely you know, get good, the supplies good, for the forgery. Good maroon red ink and such. 100% you can get the supplies for the forgery. You think you're the only one that's forged documents in this area? No. In the shackles. They're pirates. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Love it. I will say it's not a bad idea, but considering that there is a coin for each one of our heads, we would definitely be stepping into the light, as it were. Uh, we could always uh, sneak into the fortress and murder her. You're not allowed to talk anymore. Taking those privileges from I'm sorry, I These didn't meetings. mean to be... Go sit down. Yes, okay. Go sit down. All right, sorry. We could we could always marry our way into the fortress and murder them, too. Yeah. That's um, true. Very devilish smile on his face. But... We need the marriage's political weight for exactly, a while, though. Exactly. Exactly, before we can make any decisions like that, because... Nisara whispers in Caius's ear, Poison. I'm just imagining if Harlan in a three-piece suit. If your poison worth a damn, we'd... So, Sad we could offer... Noises. We could offer to go as a protection detail with some of these ships with the intent of meeting your fair lady on these rocks. Fair lady, not from what I've heard. Yeah. Love is blind until it isn't. Right. But any idea of how to take this thing out? I think I'd be the smartest way for us to get there. I think ultimately we sail under the white flag. We we offer to hire her scribes. And anything else that happens is a bonus. Maybe once if we get there, we it, can it, see if there's any uh, dissent in the crew. Exactly. And we'll also see if she has any work for us. Maybe earn indeed, our way if, in. If this isn't the route to free captaincy, it's not the route to free captaincy. If it is, excellent. Right. I'm behind it if you lads are. <laughs> Is all of our treasure in the form of a uh, plunder? Yes. Okay. Uh, but uh, since you've been plundering for a while, well, I just meant like like off off camera type stuff, or if we're getting gold. Uh, everyone gains an additional thirty one hundred and seventeen gold from the plunder that you got Excellent. by plundering. And that's each. That is each. Yes. Awesome. Very successful month of plundering. Very successful. How long do we spend on a goat's head? Beyond call? the research? You tell me. Uh, we'll spend, for a month. Spend, a, spend a week there. Week there? Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, another just week. for the crew, because we might sail to sail to Tidewater, then just get refused. That's true. Mm -hmm. There's no reason sure to, to stress the crew. No. No reason to stress the crew. I want to have done something while he's... Yeah. Yeah. Being a big nerd, I would love to find a good smith and put down uh, some of my gold pieces to get our boy Owlbear a new fuck stick because yeah, he's been doing Absolutely. some work and he needs Absolutely. an upgrade. Oh, I will put my, what I will kind of weapon do you want Owlbear to have? I do want. We, I was, well, go ahead. Do we want a Earthbreaker or do we want a Go Falchion? Yeah, see, I was thinking Earthbreaker just because it's it's big and you can just smash it around and smash shit. Like, I'm worried that he's not the brightest, so with a cutting to, weapon, he might hurt himself. To, to be fair, you still need to hit with the head of a hammer on, like, a club. Well, well, yeah. But he's got, um, like, 22 strength. So, yeah, no, but whichever way we do it, we need, we need to hook a boy up because he's been doing some work with that giant stick of his um i know also, we've mentioned I'll, it so i'll mark off that gold for the uh for the hauberk i was talking about so for a set of chain mail <laughs> so whichever way we want to we want to go about it but i think he's uh since earned it as many times as he's uh yeah, saved I mean, some having, having somebody that does like blunt will would be nice 
Is yeah, that what I'm going to so say? Because I don't think any of us do blunt. It's 2d6 medium critical times three bludgeoning. Yep. Two handed him, Marshall. He's got like, what is it, 20 some, 22 strength, something like that. There was some ridiculous he amount. He's 22? Jesus. Yeah, he's got a ridiculous strength score for. Oh uh, my God. Well, because he's it's just, he's just big and strong. That's his thing. <laughs> I mean, I vote Earthbreaker. I yeah. asked him to sell his soul away for a plus two N. <laughs> Wouldn't be very hard. He's not very smart. Your call? Yeah, I don't I care mean, about the weapon as far as that goes. I mean, Earthbreaker's fine with me. Yeah. He's got what, a four end or a six end? I think it's... His, his end is a four. Yeah. He's... So, he'd go, so he'd go from caveman to just being really dumb. That is if, I, if I had him sell his soul away. I mean, yeah, but right now his, his whole thing is smash thing and smash thing that try to hurt Captain. So yeah. do you want him to be smarter? Because he pretty much does everything you need a really good, yeah. like well-trained no, attack dog to do. So I'm, I, um, I vote Earthbreaker on that. Yeah, right. I say it's Earthbreaker. Don't don't overcomplicate it. And just give him something shiny new, and then yeah. he'll be Keep placated for a while. Master work or plus one. Well, I mean, I'll I'll, I'll chip in there with. That's all I got. Let's see, so there. <sighs> what is it? What is it? To, what is it for plus one? 2300 plus whatever the weapon is it's like 40 it's like 40 or 50 gold for like the weapon itself it's not that much i mean if we can scrape together plus one and if not master works fine i mean absolutely scrape together plus one yep fuck yeah what well, did mention to him about a new shiny you got a new shiny i would like to get a cure light wounds Wand. Done. Um, while we're here, um, I don't know if I can make a perception check on it. Uh, is there anybody fucking eyeballing us or asking about the crew at all? Or no, nobody actually. Everyone seems to think you're pretty cool. I mean, you've shown up in 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 Goat's Head like three or four times and just spent a lot of money. People are like, "Oh, these guys are back. Hey, how's it going? You got some plunder you want to spend? We like you." Uh, no, people like you. Like, they think okay. you are the bee's fucking niece, is what they think. Well, I'm definitely going to bring that back to the captain of at least nobody's uh, uh, looking into us at all right now. I'd like, to grab, not. I'd like to grab a wand of gravity bow if I can find one, too. You know what? Yes. Yes, you can. This is yeah. our arming up sequence before the, uh... It's considering we've done that before the heist. <laughs> This is the entire reason why I have the fucking prehensile tail, so I can use my use use the wand with my tail. Yeah, it's the whole reason. Is a wand one d eight plus three or plus five? Plus three. A wand, a wand of pure, pure light wounds. One d eight plus one. Well, it's one d eight plus one, but you can find one for plus three. It's just going to cost you more. Do you want the plus one or the plus three? Oh, I thought it was at the caster level of the person who created it. It's always at minimum, always unless at minimum. you specify otherwise. Correct. Yeah, so that costs you more minimum, money. Yeah, but the minimum level would be third, third, right? Yeah, but you can craft at a lower level than that. Correct. No, I'm no, I'm just talking. It's going to be a one d eight, but it's the plus. Yeah, one d eight plus one. No, that that's what I'm saying is that you can craft at the lower. Like you can choose to craft whatever caster level you want. It costs more money. You can craft. Yeah. You, you can in fact craft above your own caster level. Okay. You can craft so a caster plus, level eighteen item. It's plus one then. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was wanting to know. All right. So, how much are we down for the the hammer? And then... You guys bypassed a really hard fight through some guile. Oh, that yeah. That was impressive. No. I Like, you guys still could have snuck on off. and, like, cut it. I'm a little sad because I had this really kick-ass battle map set up for it. But... Hmm. It tells me that would be a short yeah. fight. At least some cyberpunk level fights. And not in our favor. Maybe. I've been good. I've been good. I was excited. And Caius is... Do, do we know anything specifically about... Um, Aug, uh, is it Augustine? Augustus? Augusta. Do we know anything specifically about her? Like, what she likes? Like, we can get a gift of some sort? I mean, with that 33, she's really partial to strawberries. Which are hard to get in the shackles. And while you guys think about that, give me, like, two seconds. 
and have uh make Concha Bar the uh like frostbolt bitch just to you know keep like a little refrigerator going to keep them yeah. fresh nice and long. I have a make one. No. So, so our plan is is we're gonna go there offer our services or are we just immediately going in and just going this is Kai it's very handsome would you like him well, I think the intent was to hire offer to hire the scribes, scribes. and then let yeah. come of that what it may regardless whether if it's like work or if she takes a fancy to him I, which whichever way it kind of plays out I think okay. was the consensus right yeah I just want to make sure I've got an idea what the game plan is going into it. Wands are 50 charges, right? Wands are, in fact, 50 charges. Yes. Right. Okay. Remember how I said my favorite caffeinated drink was coffee? Right through me. Like, right through me. I've been holding that for an hour and 15 minutes. So I was just yeah. like, I got to take a break. Sorry, buddy. All good. We're back. We're back. <laughs> Nature calls and we all listen. That is. So you guys want to head off to... Well, let me know when you guys are ready. We will head over to Tidewater Rock. Yeah. All right. Uh, was there any chance that we found strawberries here in Coach's Head? Roll me. A diplomacy check. Uh, I will do so. Unless someone else really wants to. I think uh, you have the highest diplomacy. Don't... Yeah, we'll just, we'll just go you with also, find also, I ask, to be fair. the freshest strawberries that were ever strawberried. And all of the shackles. Now that's saying that they're probably like five steps below regular strawberries on the mainland, but they're still really good. They're in the shackles um, though, which is what matters. Yeah. How much would it be to craft like a cold box? Can Conchibar like make just a wondrous item cold box? Conchibar, I could do such a thing. It would be very easy. I would simply need some metal and I would constantly just cast ice bolt at it. Just nah. Nah. Yeah, but passively. Ray of frost. 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 How much money do you Ray need to do it? Oh, um, 50 gold? Make a... That's, that's all? All right. Ray of Frost. Ray of Frost. Ray of Frost. It's got to, uh, and uh, no, again, gold. Again, 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 a passive one. Not, not something you need to actively, actively cool. Oh. As a gift. <laughs> More than that? Probably 500? All right. Uh, Caius will hand him 500 golden pieces. Ray of Frost. Permanency. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's that's silly. Uh, but no, he can make a uh, a cold box. I will call it a colderator. I think it. I think that that'll stick. Let go. <laughs> I think that one will stick. That's the one. Keeps things cold. Rated. <laughs> I want to get it embossed on the side. The cold raider. The cold raider is what it's called. Yes. That's exactly. That's canon inside our Skull and Trackles game. Contrabar is going to become rich uh, by creating coldinators. Oh, oh no, we 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 own him. We're rich. and and we and we cipher. No, we we get we get a kickback because if he doesn't, then what's going to happen is Caius <laughs> is going to release a book called, you know, if I did it, and it's a story about. Thing. Him fucking a fish. So we just yes. just blackmail him for money, pretty much. <laughs> That's really. You funny. got one of them cold boxes. You mean uh, that guy who fucks the fishes boxes? You mean the guy that know. fucks fish? <laughs> the fish fuckerator? There it is. All right. So you guys travel off. You guys travel off back, and eventually, you after several days of travel, a week or so, you come to. A series of islands, an archipelago, as it were. And what you see... The tower rises like a solid block from the sea at the edge of this island. A pounding surf rolls around its base and partially covers the steps that lead up to its front gate. A few arrow slits pierce the walls here and there. A single shuttered window opens high upon the face of the fortress. A roof of metal, shingles, rises from its battlements where sentries keep lookout, and siege weapons, strange, unknown, mysterious-looking siege weapons. Caius will, will approach Mr. Uh, Mr. Elliot and point them out. Uh, may I borrow your spyglass, Captain? Of course. Ooh. 
have no idea what those are, Captain. Excellent. And he walks away. And if I have learned anything, Captain, it is to fear what you do not know. I'm scared all Wait the time. I already told you this. I'm scared <laughs> all the time. Constantly crying. Well, let me look through that. Yeah. Okay, so um, walk here. It looks like a bigger version of your boomstick. It looks like a bigger version of your boomstick. It's Bezmara's boomstick, but larger. I want one. Can, we see what this can do. Bum, bum, bum. We might I need vote to hide. We don't, I vote we don't piss this lady off. We might need to hide the boomstick. But you are flying, you are sailing in with the white flag raised. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. That. As you get closer, you can see that the main tower you saw from the distance away was actually, was actually just the main kind of tower, the main like internal part of this garrison. And there are actually several small circular towers, as well as a small dock that your ship can pull up alongside and you can can dock there the guards of this of this of this battlement as it were this tidewater rock they uh they they acknowledge by waving a flag in response basically stating yes you may approach and as you all pull up to and dock the boat you see that there is a large metal door at the end of the dock that leads into the side of the fortress. Several of these large Bismarin boomsticks are pointed in the direction of your ship. And at the top of the battlements, a man approaches. Now, you would recognize this man. This is Yoyaster McClaig. Yoyaster McClaig. Now, Yoyaster McClaig is the garrison's commander, as it were. Basically, he's like... He's like first mate to Smithy, if that makes sense. If the commander... You know, if, if a, if a mm -hmm. free captain can have a first mate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move you guys over. I bought this battle map pack, and there's just a bunch of really cool... Really cool things. And this isn't exactly how it's described in the book. But this was just too perfect and I had to use it. So here's where we're at. All right, so I'm going to zoom in really close. There you go. Cool. So he calls over. Good day to you, fellow sailors. I call out to you. Uh, what business have you here at Tidewater Rock? Whirls his mustache. We seek, we seek to employ your scribes we've heard of. Ah, yes, the scribes of Tidewater. They are fabled all over the shackles. Anyone who needs a document to look like it is real comes and seeks their expertise. However, most choose to write before arriving at our docks. This is a bit out of protocol. Well, here you would know that there's absolutely no protocol. He's completely just fucking with you guys right now, trying to see how you react to it. Because you did a lot of research and had a nat 20 on knowledge, Smithy. And I've got a good, pretty good sense of motor check. Sorry, I just channeled uh, Atomic there. Oh, um, I feel so tingly and good. <laughs> <laughs> um, we should send a boat to send a boat, sir. Captain, he's full of shit. <laughs> we didn't need to. I do not recognize the colors of your ship. What? Uh, what is the name of your vessel? This is the Devil's Deed, and I'm Captain Caius. This is my first mate, Edward Tarbos, and he goes through the introductions. Blah, 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 And as he finishes, he'll take a breath and whisper over his shoulder, go find, go find the lady. See, perch on her shoulder, see what happens. Find the lady, perch on her shoulder. Oh, I like it. So she, she flies up, goes to look for her. The lady... The lady herself is actually on the interior, the internal tower, and she is, I want you to imagine, like, 
just the most heavily it looks like this she looks like this got lots of makeup on and i want you to imagine like 50 year old widow that inherited a bunch of money from her old like millionaire billionaire husband and is now like lounging on a beach so she's like wearing a bikini basically and is like sunning with a mai tai like on a little table and there's just this like like pool boy in a in a, in a banana hammock just like fanning her yeah waving with the like a giant on. fan just like this and she's just like lounging there and she's got like she's got one of those like sun things with like refl like a mirror like reflective she's just living it up is what she's doing um yes that is that is exactly who she is in this moment which i think is brilliant all right so she's doing that and she lands and um uh nasara's first uh first thought as she like gets close is that this woman is very oily <laughs> Like covered in oil, it's just very oily, and chooses to land on the table rather than her because it's very yeah, oh obviously very sticky. Uh, she doesn't like it. She doesn't like it. it's too slippery. All right, but the man, McLeague, um, reaches uh, calls out again. Well, Captain Gaius, I must say, your ship is a bit small for those that usually come to our shores. But uh, if your coin is good, then. Uh, our scribes will likely be at your disposal. I must, of course, I must, of course, run this by the lady of the Tidewater Rock. However, uh, she has been in a good mood today, so you should likely be welcomed in. Do you mind waiting Ky on the docks? Caius calls back up. The only bigger ship we've seen in the shackles is the Dominator so far. You saw the Dominator and lived to tell the tale? Something to talk about over dinner. He nods looks impressed he turns back talks to a one of the guards next to him the guard runs off he leans over the edge what is your meal of choice for dinner whatever the pot holds a man who is not too picky is a man that will always be satisfied <clears throat> It is also a man who will likely be itchy at one point, but that is another conversation, he says, and he laughs very heartily. <laughs> ah, the devil Ky there, Caius he knows just, what I'm talking about. Caius just smiles up, you fool. I'm immune to disease. Ooh. <laughs> uh, he laughs and points at, uh, at Harlan, and he goes, you, uh, pointy head, you know what I'm talking about, right? Pointy head? You've been still itchy at one point. <laughs> just, it just, I was just like, I'm just gonna, just gonna keep his mouth shut. You guys are getting the impression as you're looking at some of these, some of these men and women that are guarding Tidewater, that you might be some of the first people that they've seen in a while. This guy's very talkative for someone who's supposed to be the guard, and although they have the guns pointed at you. That sense motive check, uh, I believe someone made. Yes, walk here. here. You get the impression, walk here, that everyone's super lax right now. Like they are super relaxed. Um, Not they don't really seem that nervous. They almost seem a little lazy, for lack of a better phrase. Like they're a little like whatever. We're fine. No one's going to actually attack us. It's all for show. Yeah, Caius will uh, lean into that once it comes to his attention and kind of joke back. I'd be careful. That's the bowman. You might sink our ship, but you might take an arrow to the eye for it. Wait. Joking about the pointy head. Oh, so he is a pointy head that shoots the arrows. I see. I see. Oh, sh God. I've rolled shit. 13's still not bad. But... Oh, um, he laughs at your joke, but the laugh you can tell kind of is it how bad your joke was, not at the joke itself. And he mm -hmm. does not try. He goes, ha ha! Oh, I see humor is not your uh, your chosen uh, profession. That is fine. No worries. No worries. I see. I see. What? What is that? Yes. Ah, the Lady of the Rock will meet with you. And uh, she also has requested that she be allowed a tour of your ship. It has been a while since she has seen a new pirate vessel in the shackles. Of course, this is after dinner and after you have been thoroughly vetted. I'm sure you understand. 
Yeah, Kaya nods. Anyone? Anyone? I don't want. I doubt she's gonna bring enough guards aboard to threaten us. But we're gate. already in her bay. So. Open the gate. Open the gate. Open the gate. Open the gate. And then you hear them like the cranking, and the gates open up, and you are welcomed into into Tide Water Rock, which is literally just a giant stone fortress built on a very small island, and it's probably enough for maybe twenty to thirty people to live in pretty comfortably, mostly because it has its own source of fresh water from the little island uh, just south of it that connects it. There's a little walkway that connects it. Uh, but you head in and you can see there's a couple people and they're like, everyone's just kind of lounging, hanging out, eating food, relaxing and enjoying themselves. And the lady, who has fully clothed herself, is dressed in this long purple dress, calls out to you from this like balcony, which is these steps that lead up to the main building. And she calls out and she says, I am to understand that you are one Captain Caius. This is your first mate, Edward, your bosun, Wakir, and the bird tamer. Caius chuckles, gives a gives a bow, and says, I have the honor of them be of, of having them as my crew. I understand you're the lady of the rock, you know, sweeps his hat off and gives a bow. Yeah. You speak of honor. That you are a pirate. Interesting, interesting combination. I have not. Oh, known... I speak. Oh, I speak of no honor, merely manners. <laughs> she laughs. It's a genuine, hearty laugh. Says Mars way is honorable. Nods. Indeed, indeed, the pirate queen's ways do hold with them a a way of honor. I am to understand you seek use of my scribes. It is my custom to ask whom it is you choose and wish and desire to deceive. The Chalaxian state and the Asmodean church. I come with me with a great deal of seed documents and knowledge of the inner workings of the state and the church to aid in their, in, aid in their work. I accept any pirate, any man, any woman, anyone that seeks to cause ch ch chillax, chillaxia, chillaxia, chillax, chillax, there it is, chillax, a bit of unrest, is someone I choose to call friend. Come, let us discuss the specifics. And uh, you guys are welcomed in. The hall itself is pretty nice looking. Nothing too crazy. Like, it's a fortress that's been kind of converted into, like, an estate, right? Um, mm -hmm. But you guys are able to come in. You're given some food, drink, water. You guys are able to schmooze, talk with some of the guards. The impression you get is that, like, this place has never been assaulted. Like, except one time years ago. And it was such a one-sided victory. A farce. That the simple... Not like, like literally they exist and have not been accosted because of the fable, the tale, the horror of that battle. They just destroyed them, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the big thing you're picking up on, guys, is that these fighters, these pirates, these guards, fell out of practice. That's a good thing for you. Maybe it's not. But the Lady of the Water, uh, Lady Smithy, she is genuinely pretty nice to you Caius she talks to you she gets the scribes they start work on it. it's going to take them several days to do this perhaps even a week she invites you all to stay um do you give her the gift of strawberries absolutely loves and, that and every day Caius is going to use his his self-actualization to give the scribes seed documents you know pulling quotes out of his library of scripture and you know the the legal code of Cheliax and all of that Giving, so, giving them, you know, the, the kernel of truth. I would like to cut to a scene. This is like several days later, right? You've been here. Everything's going well. Mm -hmm. You're schmoozing. Um, they've let you fill up some water. And she has asked for the tour of the Devil's Deed, right? The Devil's Deed. And, you know, you gave her the tour. She was impressed. She liked it. And then you two, you two retired um, kind of later in the day for a private meal. Um, which she requested. She requested a private meal with you. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, she and you are in your captain's quarters, your cabin, as it were, and you're you're just taking a meal together, and she's kind of been laughing, and you're joking, and it's just it's nice, it's pleasant, and mm -hmm. for having dealt with a lot of you know rapscallions, this is maybe nice for Caius. I I don't know Caius, like it's it's a little more highbrow, as it were. Yeah, Ca Caius is a little bit more uh, refined than a than a pirate. Not yeah. he's not he's not a nobleman by any means, but. But this is actually going to be the momentum that Fire spent about an hour ago. I've been holding on to it. But she's been talking to you. And you can, you've can you realized as this has gone on, Caius, that her defenses have gotten lower and lower and lower, and the walls are basically down. You are mid-conversation. You've maybe just said something funny. She's laughing at it. Caius, the jokester. Maybe it wasn't that funny, but she's still laughing. Yeah. I don't know. Roll me a uh, roll me a diplomacy check. Let's see how funny it actually was. We're going to lean into this. Because that will flavor how I, how I do this. It was, it was pretty funny. fucking oh, hilarious. Really? <laughs> and she laughs her ass off at that. Absolutely laughs her ass off. And she says, wait, you're telling me that from the beach, two arrows directly into her heart? And then he said, what? And she like shakes her head. That is a man that I would keep very close to you as long as you choose to be a captain. He is one that is worth his weight in gold. He's already proven to be he, He's already proven to be so. I'm going to speak very candidly, Captain. May I call you Caius? Of course. Caius, I... I am not long world and you realize in this moment that her makeup and maybe you've noticed it but you just kind of brush it off but her makeup is like really thick like almost almost aggressively thick mm -hmm. and she says i have contracted a sickness I have had the best doctors clerics, priests look at it and it seems that there is no cure known to us mere mortals she raises a hand it is not contagious but it is a slow and somewhat painful death Caius kind of smirks at the at the mention of uh, not contagious. Doesn't you know? Kind of smirks arrogantly. Yeah. Um. She brushes a, her hand on her face, and as she does so, you notice that there is actually like a hole in her cheek, and you recognize this as like kind of looks like like that flesh eating disease. Oh, proceed. Like yeah. leprosy. Yeah. And she covers it back up. Like, it's almost like she brushes, it disappears, then brushes again, and it covers it back up. Mm -hmm. The only thing that the beasts and doctors could do for me is prevent me from spreading it to anyone else. They say I have months, perhaps two, perhaps three, but before long, I will depart. And Tidewater Rock will fall to whomever realize I, realizes I am gone first. I know Caius we frowns have... a little bit about that and says, Well, I can't say it describes the only reason I came here. We it's... came to seek your blessing in the form you can give it. And sponsoring me as a free captain. You are a worshipper of Asmodeus, are you not? He nods and pats his holy symbol. This is also the momentum spend. He reaches between her bosoms and pulls out an unholy symbol of Asmodeus. She leans forward. Have you guys ever seen that video of the 
you're single, I'm single. Let's let's let let's make a contract. It's like a it's like a joke where like this guy is like like they discuss over the course of like three minutes whether or not they should get married and like yep. they're discussing how many like you see you know what I'm talking about? That's amazing. Yep. I haven't seen that. Okay. I know, I know exactly if what you're you can find about. it, Edward, we're gonna have to send I'm, it to Caius. But it's this I'm, thing I'm where like right he's now. like like if you could find it, it's it's fucking hilarious. So basically he's like, Yo, single, I'm single. <laughs> let's discuss a potential marriage contract. All right, we're gonna summer here. She's like, no, we're going to Hawaii. He's like, no, this, and they like go back and forth, and they like, he's like, done. Yes, it's like, it's so funny. It's it's exactly oh the God. way I envisioned this, and they, you guys go back and forth. It is strictly business, and eventually you come to this agreement, and basically the agreement is she is going to marry you. It will be a strictly platonic marriage. Hmm? She will endow everything of Tidewater, its people, its fortress the very little wealth that it has left because she's basically spent all of it trying to cure herself. But she will endow it to you upon her death. And all she asks is that before she dies, you take her out to sea so that her last moments, her last moments will be at sea. And that's all she desires. Given how short her time is, would you like to sail with us now until you're... Parting. I can cast remove disease and remove curse. If tried, fortunately, it does not work. It is something far beyond that. It's to take four levels in Paladin. She looks at the game master in the sky, and uh, news oh, radio. Thank you, symbol. I appreciate you. He found it. You'll have to watch that later, guys. It's really funny. Um, but I got it in the Discord. She nods. And uh, she accepts. She will sail with you until her her last days. And in the next couple of days, there is a qu quick but relatively nice wedding that takes place between Caius and Lady Smithy. They do not kiss. They give each other a firm business handshake, as is tradition in the Asmodean faith. Um, it is sealed in blood, which is brilliant. Yeah. And Caius will have Caius will have Nisara notarize it. She absolutely does. Notarize it in hell. She's probably she's got forgers. She's probably got a notary on staff. Oh yeah, <laughs> and not not one with access to plane shift. As the as the as the wedding is wrapping up, there is the sound of some shouts. You've just firm handshaked. You hunshook. You have you have sealed the deal. That is. That is your, that is your new marriage, your marriage contract. You now have a, a fortress, really, in the shackles, and there is some shouting that comes over from the, from the Devil's Deed, and you hear Conchabar screaming, "Oh gods! No, <clears throat> Conchabar! Oh gods! Not again! More Shagwin!" And that, my friends, is where we're actually going to end today's session because we're a little bit shorter here, but you guys bypassed a huge encounter. They're going to have to deal with it, and I do not have this battle map ready for the Shogwin. But next session, we will pick up with you guys being attacked by Shogwin at Tidewater Rock, and that will be oh where that adventure goes, which will be absolutely delightful. But with that being said, good session, everybody. With that being said. What's that, Walker? So with that being said, with that being said, as I always say at the end of every session, any final thoughts, questions, comments, or concerns before we get ready to wrap up today's session? Nope. All good. All right. I'm good. You're all beautiful people. I appreciate you. Um, I need to learn better that if anyone's going to do it, Blau will find a way to bypass encounters. Yeah. And I need to. I need to prepare three to four encounters every session. Instead of just one to two. Um, because he will find a way to lawyer himself out of it. And I love that. I absolutely I love mean, that. I enjoyed watching it happen. I, it was, I mean, you got caught, I, dude. He, I mean, fool us once. You're, 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 we got fun. you. You snake. It was a lot of fun. We're, we're level six, right? He worships as um, You're so absolutely not level six. Oh, okay. You are level six and a half. No, I'm just kidding. You guys are level six, six actually. You guys did oh, level up. Yeah, that, that is level six now. Congratulations. You get your second attack. It's good things. Um, oh but you will see these delightful people back here on the 2nd of April. The 2nd of April, or Session 14 of Skull and Shackles, Raiders of the Fever Sea, where there's going to be some fighting. You guys are going to be getting attacked by Shogwin. But not only are Shogwin attacking you, 
but you guys will notice that there is a there is a ship that is approaching Tidewater Rock as well. A ship sailing, flying some pirate colors. And uh, this particular ship, well, it's kind of, they might actually have it out for you. In your short time as pirates, you've actually made some enemies. Little did you know. But uh, with that being said, any final thoughts, questions, comments, or concerns, everybody? Nobody else? You guys are good? Perfect. Well, as always, at the end of every session, thank you so much to players for playing. I appreciate you guys. This was delightful. Um, I need to learn. I, I already knew this about Blau, but um, I actually enjoyed that back and forth. It was fun to have that be. He, he, he outlawed him. I appreciate that. But uh, thank you to the players for playing. Thank you to the viewers for viewing. We will see you next time for session 14 of Skull and Shackles, uh, where they will be defending their new Tidewater Rock from some Shogwood invaders and their pirate allies. Um, it's going to be a delight. Contrabar might get kidnapped. We don't know. But. Uh, <laughs> Things are going to get crazy. So until next time, be well, be safe, happy gaming, and yo-ho fiddly-dee.